your He wouldn't allow us to stand here. I would not allow you to stand there. The, the main danger zone, and we're going to cover this right now, is called kickback. All right? Kickback is when the piece of wood gets pinched between the blade. All right, so if I, it pitches the blade when it's spinning towards me, or if it contacts the blade here and it's unsupported. So it will shoot that direction. Oh, okay. Right? So you mean towards towards you? No, no. Towards, towards, here. Towards, Tor towards the operator. Yeah. All right. So that's why we're covering how to correctly handle the board. Let's start with setup real quick. So what was the measurement that I needed to set this to in my six steps of squaring a board? It is one sixteenth. No more. One eighth greater than three and three fourths. Final. All right. So three and three fourths is right here. So it would be three and seven eighths. All right. Now. When I set up here, James and Jane, I'm going to measure from the outside of the blade to the fence. All right. So the measurement I want from the inside of the blade to the fence is three and seven eighths. So when I go to measure this, I'm going to add one more eighth of an inch, which will put me at four inches. All right. Because this is three and seven eighths. The blade is an eighth, so from the outside should be four inches. Okay, I'm gonna write that. All right. So. It's four. Whoop. So four inches. Yep. So I could put my miter gauge against the fence, and then lightly tap it until it makes contact. All right. Now, you can do this also with a tape measure. You can measure from the fence, the inside of the blade, as opposed to the outside. Right. So again, if a combination square is not available, use that. Now, last class I had a question. Can I use a tape measure on the saw? No, because the reason is every other saw here does not have that. So I want you to hone the skills either with a combination square or a tape measure in measuring the distance from the inside of the blade to the fence. Specifically, you're measuring the tooth, not the blade itself, because again, the tooth sticks off the blade, so you're measuring from that point to the fence. Does that make sense, yeah, Ben? Yeah. All right, so now that I have my fence set up, all right, I'm going to adjust my blade height. I want the blade only to be an eighth to a quarter inch above my workpiece itself. So you're going to measure that correctly. Let's do that so we can see it. So, so from the top of the blade right here, Guys, you want the tooth to be an eighth to a quarter inch above my workpiece. So I'm going to grab the adjustment blade height adjustment handle and raise it up. Now, you don't want it sticking so far out of the table because again, A, that's number one, it's not safe, and B, when it's really high like that, it's going to lift the board up and it's going to kick itself back towards yourself. So blade should only be an eighth to a quarter inch above the workpiece. Now, when I set myself up, same exact stance you've been using for the last couple weeks. Left foot forward, right foot back. My left hand, like the technique I like to do, is I like to take my pointer finger and curl it down and make my thumb make a V shape like this. All right? What that allows me to do is it allows me to put my pointer finger down on the table and then press down with my thumb. All right. The reason why I do this is this Sorry. secures the workpiece to the table, and I'm also pressing against the fence here. All right. If I press here, all right, I'm going to lift the board up, and what's going to happen is it's going to kick back into oh, the free all right. So again, left hand, pointer finger on the table, press down. All right. My right hand is my feeder hand. James, what's my right hand? Yeah, what is my right hand doing? Uh, Feeding. This is my feeder hand, so it's feeding my workpiece through. Now, this is a good point to go over the rules of three. My fingers shall not be within three inches of the left, three inches of the right, or three inches above the workpiece. All right. When I'm doing a through cut, as opposed to a groove cut, like this, all right, there's different rules to that. It is a dado, but when it goes with the grain, it is called a groove. When you go across the grain, it's called a dado. All right, so my fingers should not go for my left hand beyond the blade, all right? And it should also not go underneath the guard itself, all right? Now this is a good point to bring up the stop saw itself. This saw is the only saw that will protect your fingers on a contact. So again, 
What will happen is when your finger contacts it either on the tooth or the side, it will drop into the table and it will break itself. Oh, this is right? one of the cool ones. Yes, but the problem is, this is why I'm talking about it, the blade is now destroyed and the cartridge is now destroyed. All right? You have your fingers, which are more valuable than any blade or any cartridge we have in here, but this is $69, this is 105 What? Yes. Which one was? A new, new blade, yeah, plus the cartridge is almost 200 bucks. So again, when you are operating this saw, what you want to be very careful of is A, obviously not touching the blade with your fingers, and B, any metal. So you're not going to turn on the saw with any layout tools on it, or make sure that your workpiece does not have any pieces of metal or nails in them themselves. All right? If those contact the blade, they will cause the same exact thing that happened here. All right? Oh, is that a broken one? This is a broken one that happened two years ago. What happened? What happened to it? The riving knife made contact with the blade itself. All right? So again, making sure that this is secure is also important. But again, please do not make contact with this. With that said, every other saw blade in this class does not have that mechanism. So if you make contact with the blade on a table saw, whatever finger you make contact will be gone. All right, so again, your fingers for your left hand are not going to go beyond the blade. So another reason you don't want your left hand here, Zach. The reason why you don't want your left hand here is what I like to call the bicycle brake effect. If I'm pressing here oh, against a moving hurt. blade, Ooh. it will pinch the wood and it will shoot for you gentlemen right <laughs> here. Oh, oh. All right? That is going it's about like camp. That's I'm going about depending on what the wood is, it could be going anywhere between 35 to 55 miles an hour. Oh. So again, I experienced 70, but it's So so again, shh. Guys, again, your left hand should not go beyond the blade itself. All right? Now, I'm actually going to turn on the saw now. So with my left hand, before I turn it on, all right, I'm going to press the board down. At no time, James, at no time during the operation should I take both hands off the board while it's being cut. Oh, shoot. Correct. So with my right hand, I'm going to reach down for the power switch. Three, two, one. Once it's come up to speed, I can start to feed my workpiece in. Now, when the end of the board, guys, comes in line with the fence up there, I can reach for my push stick. Right? What I'm doing with my push sticks, I'm pressing down and towards the fence so that I do not lose pressure. So I'm pressing down. Right here, my left hand, I'm going to take it off the table. And I'm going to continue to go forward all the way through. Now, with the stop saws, you can gently, gently tap the switch off with your leg. Or you can reach down and tap oh, it. Now, so the scrap piece. <laughs> you must wait until the saw is done before you reach and grab the work piece itself. All right? With that said, we need to go over a couple more do's and don'ts. If we do this, do this. All right, so let's change that back. It's only 50 seconds on 50. I know. For what storage? All right, so here. What's wrong with this picture, James? His fingers on the I'm talking to James. Oh, sorry, I did not hear that. Uh, he doesn't have the what that doesn't have his push stick, all right? And his thumb might get cut off. So, where's his thumb? Robotic That's a rule right of three. Right. Right. It's all right, so it's breaking, it's breaking the rule of threes, all right? If, here's, the, here's an additional rule. If your hand, completely open, can push a board through without breaking this plane, you can use your hand instead of a push stick, all right? That is the only rule. Now, Chance, what's his left hand doing? It's feeding. It's feeding. Your left hand is